This reading, um, once again, is, is before our Lord undergoes his passion, but it's very appropriate because it also can refer to his ascension. And as I mentioned, the ascension is normally celebrated on the Thursday, 40 days after the resurrection of our Lord. So this past Thursday, but it's been moved to the Sunday just so that everybody could attend. But notice how our Lord says the hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures. And then he goes on to say, um, on that day you will ask in my name and the Father will grant it to you. I will not intercede on your behalf, but the Father will grant it to you because he loves you. And, and the reason the Father loves you is because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. Now, it's important to note that God loves everyone. In fact, spiritual authors point out that God loves even the souls of the damned. So God loves everyone, but that doesn't mean that everyone benefits from his love. So how do we benefit from his love? Well, we must believe in him, we must turn to him, we must make the effort to have a relationship with him. But most importantly, we must love God. And we all know that love is a unitive force. When two people are in love, their love draws them towards each other. They want to be with each other. They want to they wanna be in the presence of the love that the other has for them. It's not, not just being in the presence of the person, but being in the presence of the love that the person has for them. So love is a beautiful thing. And St. John tells us that God is love. So love is a unit of force. But another way we can think of love is that love unites us to someone. And because we are united to someone through love, we have a kind of union with them, a spiritual union. So even young couples who are madly in love, even when they're separated from each other, they're constantly thinking of each other. So they're kind of spiritually united. So when it comes to love of God, when we love God and his love for us, it's, it's, it's a very great union. And the more that we love God, the more we open ourselves to his love and the more we receive of his love, the more he will actually dwell within us. In other words, we will be united with him. So what is the key to loving God? And, you know, if we were asked on a scale of one to ten, well, how much do you love God? I'm sure we can all say that we probably need to improve our love of God. And recall how our Lord says, you know, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, with all your mind. In other words, this is the most important thing. And the reason it's the most important thing is because it's the thing that's the most beneficial for us when we love God. Because when we love God, we receive God, we receive his love, we receive his blessings, and he will grant us whatever we ask. And of course, we see this in the lives of the great saints. You know, think of Saint Anthony of Padua. You know, he, grant, he was able to perform many miracles. It was God working through him, the love of God working through him. So when we love God... Um, we have this union with God. So the key to loving God is loving Jesus. So, you know, when we think of the incarnation, why did God become man? We all know it's to save us from our sins, to teach us, but also so that we can relate to him as we relate to other human beings. So we need to, we need to be able to connect with God. And the best way to do that is through our life in union with Christ, meditating on Christ, meditating on his love for us, meditating on the crucifixion. In other words, if we realize how much he loves us, we cannot help but love him in return. So the reason our Lord says this to his disciples is because they will come to a point where they will have this complete love of God. And notice how our Lord says that you, you will be able to ask, because I want your joy to be complete, I want you to be happy. I want you to be full of joy. This is what he wants for us, for all of us. So the key is to meditate on the life of Christ and to love Christ. And if we love Christ, we cannot help but love the Father 
And so God will be more likely to answer our prayer requests. Please join now in um, the reciting the um, Novena prayer to the Holy Spirit. So we are on day two now of this Novena. If you missed a day, don't worry about it. And as I mentioned, there is a section where we pause to think of your intention. Of course, you do that in silence. And as I mentioned yesterday, think of a spiritual intention for yourself. You know, we all need to grow in charity, but maybe you need patience. Maybe you need greater self-discipline. Maybe you need to be more humble or more considerate of others, whatever. And also think of something for the sake of others. So pray for someone, maybe the conversion of someone. Pray for the conversion of sinners in general. So please join now in reciting this prayer. And just a reminder also, this evening after the 5 p.m. Mass, we will have our movie night. We will be showing the movie, The Reluctant Saint. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow down in humility at the power and grandeur of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship the Holy Trinity and give glory today to the Paraclete, our Advocate. O Holy Spirit, by your power Christ was raised from the dead to save us all. By your grace, miracles are performed in Jesus' name. By your love, we are protected from evil. And so we ask with humility and a beggar's heart for your gift of joy within us. All of the saints are marked with an uncompromisable joy in times of trial, difficulty, and pain. Give us, O Holy Spirit, the joy that surpasses all understanding that we may live as a witness to your love and fidelity. Holy Spirit, we ask for the grace Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.